What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So uh, last week we talked a little bit about creating our own style in SketchUp using SketchUp's line options. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the face options. So um, just so that you're clear on the distinction there, uh, anytime you draw something in SketchUp and you draw a face, so if I draw a square here, um, it's made up of two things. It's made up of the lines, which make up the perimeter of the shape, and then the face, which is what SketchUp draws in between all the lines. So remember that SketchUp will draw in a face as soon as you have three or more coplanar edges. So once you get three edges in here, it'll draw a face. So this week we're going to talk about the options that we have for changing the way these faces look. Um, so if you'll remember, we're working in the styles section in here. And uh, again, if you want to create a new style, that option is right here. If you're looking for more info on that, uh, go back and watch the first part of this tutorial. So um, when you're in here working with a style, all of your changes are going to be made in this edit tab right here. And uh, most of your changes can be found under these five boxes. Uh, we talked last week about the edge settings. This week we're going to talk about the face settings. So um, first thing we're going to talk about here is uh, the front and back colors of a shape in SketchUp. So um, in case you didn't know, um, every face in SketchUp has two sides. It has a front side and a back side. So if I draw this rectangle and then I rotate around, you can see how one side is a different color than the other side. So the front side of a, fa of a face in SketchUp is by default white and the back side is by default gray. But when you come in here and you work with these settings, you can actually change those options right here. So you can set this so your front color is a different color than your back color. Um, a great example of this is if you're working with something where you really want all the uh, front faces um, facing outward, what you can do is come in here and uh, set your back color to a color like red. So now if you have a shape, like let's say I've got this box right here and one of your faces is showing the back side. If you set this to red, then you can see that the back side of this sh that the back side of this face is showing right now. So you can know to come in here and reverse the faces so the uh, front side of that face is showing outward. So just a real quick easy way to see what's front and what's back in your model. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and change that back real quick. There we go. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the style options down below. So the style options down below basically set the way that SketchUp's going to render your face styles. And uh, what that means is that's going to affect the way that everything looks. And so you've got these five options right here that show you uh, or that let you set what those faces are going to look like. So um, the first one that you can click on is wireframe mode. So if you click in wireframe mode, your model is not going to show any faces at all. Um, you're not going to be able to select faces or anything like that. You're literally just going to see the lines in SketchUp. So, and this is a fairly lightweight way to do this. So remember we've talked in the past about using styles to speed your model up. Well, what this does is um, basically it doesn't have to render any textures at all. So if you have a really big model and you just need to move around it really fast, wireframe mode might be the right choice. Um, you know, sometimes though you don't want that transparency. And so uh, there's this second option in here called hidden line mode. And you can see when I switch, uh, watch this mailbox when I switch to hidden line mode. Basically that does kind of the same thing. It shows it shows your faces, but it only shows your faces in this default color. It doesn't even render front and back side. It literally, all that it does is shows enough face to block the lines that are in the background. You see how you can't see these lines in the background anymore? So again, this may even be a little faster than wireframe mode. I haven't really tested it, but I assume since it has to render less lines, it may be a little bit faster. So that's an option that you have in here. The next option you have is shaded mode. And what shaded mode does is shaded mode shows your textures um, just as a single uniform color. So if your model's colored up with just colors in here, this won't really matter. But like for example, and I'm just going to switch this back to full mode for a second. So I colored this little mailbox shape in here with the brick texture. 
Um, so what it's doing is it's got the color, but it's also showing the texture image. But if I come in here and I click on shaded mode, what that's going to do is that's just going to uniformly color that texture in as a single color. And so uh, it's just a little bit quicker way to run this stuff, especially if you have a whole bunch of high resolution textures in your image, because what this allows you to do is just see the colors that are in here without seeing the texture images themselves. Uh, the next option over here is display shaded using textures. What that means is your actual texture images are going to load. So this is like full on complete textures as they're designed. Um, so this, this will pretty much show everything if your style has this option right here. So, and then this last option is interesting. This last option is display shaded using all same. And what that actually means is this is going to take your entire model and it's just going to render it, or it's just going to show it front side, back side. Um, what that means is that every face will either show the color that you set for your front side or the color that you set for your back side. So, you know, like for example, if this face had the back side showing out, then uh, you just see that it was a gray color instead of a white color. So um, this this is this is actually really good for coming in here and doing things if you want like a pen style, like a hand drawn pen style, and you don't necessarily want those textures showing up. Um, you just want it kind of a black and white model. Um, this is a good setting to use for that. So all of these can just be used uh, a lot of the time in conjunction with line settings in order to make things look a certain way. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So uh, last option I want to talk about in here is X-ray mode. So what X-ray mode does over here in your style is it basically, no matter what your texture face is, it allows you to see the lines in the background. So it turns everything transparent in your model so you can see all the lines back here. So it's similar to a wireframe mode, but um, you can see how wireframe mode gets grayed out because you don't need it anymore. Uh, basically, as soon as you turn textures on, you're going to be able to see through them as long as x-ray mode is turned on. So, and the last option in here is uh, show material transparency or not. So, like, for example, if I come in here and I have... Um, if, this, if I put this material in here as a glass, like a translucent glass, and let's turn x-ray mode back off. So, if I turn... If I turn this into glass, you see how you can see through it right here? So if I turn off material transparency, it's just going to render that glass as a solid color. And so what that allows is that's going to allow... Um, if, if you have a model with a whole bunch of glass and you can see through everything, that's just more stuff that SketchUp has to render. So this can be another way that you can speed up a style in your model. and. Uh, you can also adjust your transparency quality in here. So, and uh, really this transparency quality option more has to do with x-ray mode. So, um, like if you have everything in here as x-ray mode and you set this to nicer, what this will allow you to do is that'll let you uh, set how opaque your faces are. So how well you can see through everything. So sometimes you really need to get a good look at textures and stuff like that while you're doing this sometimes you don't so you can come in here set transparency quality to nicer and uh, then you can adjust how things look in x-ray mode just remember that when you turn things transparent and stuff like that you are affecting um, how much stuff SketchUp has to render so in really big models um, you know the more transparency you have the more it's going to have to do and maybe the slower that your model is going to run so now that I've kind of given you an idea of what all the uh, face options are, oh, one more thing. So when you're making a change to a style like this, you see how uh, the style thumbnail has this little, uh, this little pair of arrows in here? What that means is you've made changes to your style, but you haven't saved them to that style. So as soon as you click this, what that's going to do is that's going to update architectural design style, the style that you have selected, with the changes that you made. So SketchUp's default styles will always be in here. So if you come in here and you make a change, um, it's going to create a new style that's going to show up in your model. So the changes that I made actually show up in this architectural design style piece. But see how architectural design style 1, that one's still in here as a default style. So even if you come in here and change the default styles, it will save this as a new version, not saving over the old version. So now I'm going to run through a... 
Now I'm going to run you through a quick example of what you can do with this now that we've kind of got an idea of uh, you know some of the changes that we can make and obviously there's still some stuff to talk about but let's just use what we've learned so far. So this is a model that I pulled out of the 3D warehouse of the Empire State Building. So uh, if you look around you can see it's got the whole building in here and um, everything else and it's basically just a photo modeled version of the Empire State Building. So, you know, if you look at it, it's basically just got faces, or uh, it's basically just got photos projected on here to make the faces, and they've just drawn the, uh, they've just drawn the outline of the building. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and create a stylized version of this using styles. So the only thing that I've done in here is I've come in here and I've created a whole bunch of windows. So I've just drawn a whole bunch of rectangles in here so that I have some kind of uh, window shapes that'll show up when we mess with our edge settings. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to adjust our um, faces. So we're for right now we're just going to set these in shaded mode. And we may end up changing this a little bit later. You see how as I come through and I select these things, it gives you kind of a different each one of these gives kind of a different view um, and kind of a different feel and a different style. So we're going to start off and just set this in shaded mode. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to our line settings like we talked about last week. And we're just going to make a couple quick changes. So we're going to come in here. We're going to set up jitter. If you remember, jitter makes your lines look more hand sketched like this. Uh, we're going to turn on depth cue. At least for right now, we may turn it back off. But remember, depth cue makes the lines closer to you, thicker, and the lines further up here, um, thinner. And then we're also going to turn extension on just a little bit, and we're probably going to set the extension length to 5 right now. We don't want back edges. We can turn on endpoints. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. And now let's come in here and mess with our faces one more time. So let's try setting this... We're going to come in here and just set this to display shaded using all same. So you see what that does is that makes this so we've only got light and dark shapes on this face just like this. And um, so again, you can kind of do whatever you want. Coming in here and changing these, this is more of a principle thing. But what I'm going for is just kind of trying to find a, uh, just trying to find more of a hand sketched look to this piece right here. And so... Um, I think that I'm just going to go with this. So you can see what this does is it creates kind of a different look. So the nice thing about this is you can now take this image and you could export it to like an image editor or something like that. Maybe come in here and turn the axes off. And, uh, you know, then you could come in here and put some text in here or kind of do what you want with it. So the flexibility of this is just really the awesome part of working with styles in here. So that's where I'm going to wrap this video up. If you like this video, please take a minute and click the like button down below. Uh, if you're new around here, make sure to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. And finally, please consider supporting me on Patreon. As you guys know, this is my side, this is kind of my side deal and I create these videos in the morning before work. Um, but sometimes a lot of the extensions and plugins I talk about aren't free. And I can use a little help just trying to afford them so I can keep bringing you great SketchUp content uh, even if it's only a dollar a month every little bit helps but in any case thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video